Beloved, today I would like us to reason on the topic, heaven. On the topic, heaven. Now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul was writing to the people in Thessalonians, and we today who are here as well. He was advising us and the people then not to be ignorant, nor fall asleep lest they sorrow like those who have no hope. He was admonishing them not to live unholy lives. He was telling them not to live a life not befitting a Christian, to love one another, to mind our own business, to have hope, to care for each other. And he was admonishing them that we shouldn't sorrow like people who have no hope because we have hope. We should not be like people of the world because we have hope that Jesus Christ will come back. And so whatever that we are going through, we should comfort one another that we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these ways. Therefore, we should comfort one another that we have hope in the Lord. Now, what is heaven? In the dictionary, heaven is defined as the place where God lives and where the righteous will spend eternity. Now, you go to the Bible in Revelation chapter 21, the verse number 4, and God tells us when he comes to meet us again and send us, there will be no sorrow. God will wipe away all our tears. There will be no pain. The exam that you are thinking about will be no more. Your results that you are trailing will be no more. All the former things, all of these things will pass away when we get to heaven. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4, it talks about we receiving a crown of glory that does not fade away. Don't you want this? A crown of glory that does not fade away. And in Revelation chapter 22, the verse numbered 1 to 5, it goes on to take a whole lot. You can read and picture the, the um, image that um, John was trying to make here. It talks about the water of life as clear as the crystal flowing from the throne of God and the lamb down the middle of the great city. It took a whole lot. If you read from the 1 to 5, you get to know there will be no night. Uh, they will not need light of a lamb or light of a sun because the Lord will give us light and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Now this place is often greeted with a lot of emotions. This question, or this place, heaven. Now as a brother or sister sitting by you, will you go to heaven? And, and you can see that some people are thinking, will I go to heaven? Some people are confused are they really good? When you ask the person, the person answer you. Right? The person didn't answer. Yes. And it's not, we are not the only people not to answer this question. A lot of people think that if you ask this question, I think I might go. Maybe. A whole lot of uh, comments that you are going to get when this particular question is asked. There are a lot of people here whom we baptized, but when we are asked this question, we still find ourselves wanting. A lot of people have different beliefs. I was researching on people's comments or people's views on um, heaven. And um, one person said, yes, I'll go to heaven. And the reason um, she gave was because she was a Catholic. And so she's going to heaven. Another person also said, um, yes, he's going to heaven because he has a good attitude and he's a good boy. And once in a while, he goes to church. And so he's going to heaven. And the last person that researcher said he is going to heaven because he is pursuing a career in medicine and he's helping a lot of people. And so he is also going to heaven. So the people pursue medicine. I, I, I even asked myself whether they do not collect money when they take care of people. But that's fine. And so this um, comment, this place, is often greeted with a lot of um, views, a lot of emotions. Why? Because of the lives that we live. A lot of views. People even claim they've been to heaven and they are back. And so when you go to YouTube, yesterday I was researching on YouTube, some people are acting like tall guys. And so you go to the YouTube, a tour in heaven. 
So you go there and they are taking you to, um, to let you know how heaven is going to be like. Tall guys in heaven. As Christians, we are supposed to prepare for this place. Because why are we here? Why are we coming here Tuesdays? Why are we coming here Fridays? Why are we living life as Christians? People are sinning against us and then we are forgiving them. The world, there are lots of pleasures in the world. And we forsake all these things to come here to listen to the word of God, to follow Christ. Why? Because we have hope. It will be so sad. After all these, we miss this place. And so we must prepare for such a place. And so I have some few points for us to discuss. First of all, we must walk in the light. We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. And we must be able to walk in the light. Yes, a Christian can sin. A Christian can commit adultery. A Christian can steal. Even as I'm speaking, some people may be looking on their phones, what's happening. And this is a sin. You've made the phone your idol of worship. And all these are considered sin. Some people are in constant anxiety because of certain sins that they committed. Maybe some years ago, even maybe before they were baptized. But this, this sin has been haunting them, and so they feel that they have no hope. But we have hope in the Lord. We must walk in the light. The Bible describes sin as a person who is blind in darkness. Listen carefully, a person blind and in darkness. Last time I was going home and suddenly uh, the switch of the light. And you know, immediately the switch of the light, everything becomes blank. And so imagine that the blind person is also in darkness. You can't see anything. You don't know where you are even going. It also describes the person as an animal which has been led astray, who doesn't know its owner. We don't know God when we commit sin. We've been led astray. Once in a local congregation, um, after the sermon like this, uh, one person was asked to stand up and then, uh, sorry, they, they were asked if you, have, if you want to be baptized or if you want to confess your sins. And then one woman stood up. And the woman said, um, I've been committing adultery and I'm, uh, I want the Lord to um, forgive me. And then the person sitting by me said, hey, who did it be a woman? Yes. And so the thing is, is constant. Sin enslaves us. We are going to treat the, to the topic concept of sin. You, go, you are going to see how sin works. It damages you. The time that you realize, you will see how painful it is to exit. But we should not worry. We don't have to be in constant anxiety. Romans chapter 4 verse number 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. We shouldn't let sin engulf us. We shouldn't let sin take over us. We have an advocate. Have you forgotten that we were one sinners and Jesus Christ came to die for you and I? Jesus Christ is greater than our sins. And so whenever we feel sin has engulfed us, we must fight. We must not be in constant anxiety. We must not give up. Now, there are, there are lots of people who, after baptizing, they leave the church maybe because of something that the brethren has done. So they decide to leave the church. Second Peter chapter 2, the verse number 20 to 21. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. We are being cautioned that we are not supposed to leave the faith. And this is a sin. And the Bible describes this kind of sin as being worse than when we didn't know God, than when we didn't even baptize. Beloved, yes, there is sin. But because of this place, because of where we want to spend our eternity, we must not let sin engulf us. We must not let sin enslave us. The next point is, we must stand the difficulties of the world. We must stand the difficulties of the world of the world. Most of the times we go through a lot of difficulties in the world. We face challenges in our families, in our lecture halls, in our personal lives, with our friends, and a whole lot of things. And 
to take um, here right now the members here for example there are lots of people who go through a lot and they look out and they see people who are flourishing in businesses they are, they are with their cars and a whole lot and they ask themselves why recently i talked with the brethren who used not to socialize after um, church like we normally do and so i asked the person why is this so and the person told me that he has to go and rest because he has to work to pay for his school fees. And so sometimes he even makes lectures to um, work um, and also pay the fees. And lots of things are going on. Last week I was also talking with my friend and he wanted to quit going to school because he thinks people have been dictating for um, him and a whole lot of things. And so he wants to focus on himself first because, before he continues. And you will see that you might think that this is not a problem, but it really is a problem. It's a mental problem that mostly haunts people. And because of this, we wonder why. We look at people who are rich, and we think, we look at people who are enjoying life, and we wonder why the test. Last year, I was speaking with a sister, and he said that if you are rich, you have no problem. And I said, are you sure? Are you sure? Because a lot, there are lots of people who are also rich and they are facing difficulties. No, you mustn't think that. As a Christian, you can go through difficulties. You can go through difficulties. We must not let the things of the world be taste for us. We must not forsake the assembly of the saints for the world. Let's take a look at um, a certain passage in Matthew chapter 4, the verse numbered 8 to 10. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I want you to underline the word of. Jesus Christ was being tempted, tempted, and Satan took him on the seedingly high mountains and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. When we say something is off, what does it mean? It belongs to that particular thing. And so all these kingdoms, all these glories, they belong to the world. All these things, if you continue the reading, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall save. And so, because it's of the world, Jesus Christ rejected. Because God, Jesus Christ, is going to one day destroy the whole world. And these kingdoms and their glory belongs to the world. And so, one day, Everything in it is going to be burned up. And so why worry yourself chasing after all these pleasures? Some people do business and forsake the assembly of the saints because of things of the world. Things belonging to the world. That one day we are going to live. If the Lord doesn't even come today, you don't know when you might die. Jesus Christ rejected being a ruler of the world. Because it can't be compared to the, result, the reward he will receive from God. The reward that we receive when we live our lives as Christians can't be compared to the glories and kingdoms of the world. Now in April, one politician died. And then they went to bury him. Within this week, a source came. I don't know whether the source is right or not. And according to the source, this man has 30 million U.S. dollars in his bank account. Where is he? He's dead. Some people are going to spend the money. Yes. And the Bible tells us these people, they spend the money anyhow. The things in the world won't last. And so we must not let this anxiety weaken us. We must not let this pain weaken us. We must be Christians. We must not uh, live our lives as people of the world. The last point I'm going to touch on is seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There are a lot of people in and out of the church and there are even some of here we are listening to this sermon right now but we refuse to enter the church 
Don't think because you are sitting here means you are part of us. No. You haven't been baptized. You are refusing to enter the church that Christ built. A lot of people in and out of the church. There are some who are also in it, but what are you doing for the church? If you've been baptized, yes, you come to the church, yes, you are living your life as Christians, but what are you doing for God? Once we were going for evangelism, and one brethren said, um, in my family, I'm the only person attending the church of Christ, uh, the church of Christ. And I said, I said in my mind, what about your family members? What about your friends? What are you doing for your friends? Wouldn't you love on the beautiful river for your mother to be there, for your friend who is not in the church to also be there? What are you doing? We go for evangelism to evangelize to people. What are you doing? You are not going here with us. Daniel chapter 12, verse number 3. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. How many people are you turning to righteousness? How many people? You see on a people's status, and this is my friend from another mother. The person is not even in the church. And then you, you don't care. The, the person is helping you. Maybe you, you are in need of food. The person comes to give you food. You are not even thinking of evangelizing to the people, to the person. Have you thought of what will happen to the person when the person dies? Have you thought of it? Your friends in the lecture rooms, your family members at home, who does it even know? Have you ever thought? Of evangelizing to them. We will gather on that beautiful shore, on that peaceful river. How many people have you been able to convert? Now, who has watched um, this, this movie, an Indian movie, um, Jehu? This, this, this movie, the particular person I'm talking about helped someone, and the person wanted to give the person a reward, and he said no. Instead of giving me a reward, help three persons. And tell the three people to also help three other brethren or people in the movie. Now, I'm also telling you, if you help three people, you also help three people, how many people are there? <laughs> Somebody says six. Hey. To help three people, how many are there? If those three people also help three people, how many are there? Please don't calculate anything. You are making mistakes. <laughs> yes. I know some people in the church who, make, who made someone active, and because of that, that person is also making another person also active. If you continue in this manner, we all will be in heaven together. We shall, miss the Lord, we shall meet the Lord in the clouds. There are also a lot of people who, after they are baptized, they leave. They don't know why they've been baptized. The Lord said in 2 Peter chapter 2, the verse number 20, that after they have known the Lord and they depart, they are where, they are, their end is worse than their beginning. What are you doing to help these people? You know, these people, because they don't have much knowledge, because they are newly converts, they don't have much knowledge about the Bible. And so when you leave them, they, they are like a lightweight. They wonder about anyhow. What are you doing to make sure that these people who get baptized continue in the apostles' doctrine, continues to be in the church? First Corinthians chapter 3. The verse number 15. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. In the verse 10, he said, if you continue to work your, and your work flourish, you, you will receive a reward. And so you think you've, been baptized, you've baptized somebody because of you, yes, you've turned somebody to righteousness, but the person has left. The person has departed the faith. Your work has been burnt up. Yes, you will be saved, but the reward, you won't receive it. We must help each other to go to heaven. We must love one another. If a brother or sister is going through certain difficulties, certain aspects are not right, you tell the person, this and this and this is not right, and you try to help the person. An anthropologist, um, is a story about an anthropologist who proposed a game to some case, and he put a, a, a basket of fruit under a tree, 
and he told the children to run. The person who gets there first takes all the food and eats. And immediately he told them to run. They all held, held their hands together and they ran together and sat under the tree to eat the fruits together. And when the man asked why they ran like that, as one person could have um, had all the food, he said, Ubuntu, how can one of us be happy if all the other ones are sad? Ubuntu means I am because you are. I am because you are. Now, the, the passage that I enjoy, the place I enjoy is, they all sat down together to enjoy their treats. When you help people, when you hold hands, at the end, we will all meet in heaven. Now, let us look at this picture. Let us look at this picture. Yes, this picture, you can see, not all of us are here. We can see a lot of people. And um, forgive me, this is heaven. <laughs> forgive me, this is heaven. And we can see a lot of, yes, we can see Afari as a uh, choir and Chroma there. And then we can see a whole lot of people. <laughs> yes. We can see a lot of people. Now, I want you to picture this. Wouldn't it be nice when the Lord comes, all of us meet like this? No, we won't be taking pictures. But we will have another gallery where we socialize like this and have happiness like this. Now, those in this picture, are you sure you are going to be a part of this? Are you sure you are going to be part? And those who are not, what are you doing to be part of this picture? What are you doing for your friends to be part of this picture? What are you doing for your family members in other denominations to be part of this picture? What are you doing? We must hold each, as, each other's hands. Ubuntu, I am because we are. To the unbaptized, remember, this world is not your home. This world will vanish. This world will be destroyed. Save yourself. The Lord is standing at the door. Come to him. What kind of sin are you indulging that you think that because of that you can't baptize? Do you think all the people who are baptized are free from sin and they've not sinned before? No. But they are constantly um, repenting of their sins. If you sin, you repent and you never do, that, do it again. So if you are constantly in a sin and you are not baptized, beloved, you are going to hell. You are going to eternal damnation. Repent and be baptized for the remissions of sin. Before I end, I would like to ask to read First Thessalonians chapter 2, the verse numbered 19 to 20. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19 to 20. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? It is a question. Reflect on this. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even in you, in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. Is it not you, even you, in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? We have no hope in this world. We have no joy in this world. We have no crown in this world. But at the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming, that's why we have this hope, this joy, and this crown of rejoicing. For you, you are our glory and joy. Therefore, beloved, as First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18, we see, Therefore, beloved, comfort one another with these words. May God help us all and help us to gather at the beautiful river. Amen.